Bad movies are often terrible from start to finish, but sometimes even a 4 out of 10 director has one 10 out of 10 idea and manages to strike gold in just a single fleeting scene, as is absolutely the case with these following movies, which are otherwise not remotely worth your time. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are six terrible movies with one incredible scene. Number six, Johnny's Room Service Rant, Johnny Mnemonic. Johnny Mnemonic is a classic example of Hollywood desperately attempting to cash in on the techno-thriller trend in the mid-90s. Despite a strong concept and some solid visuals, this is a haphazardly directed, scarcely logical piece of storytelling led by a, and it pains me to say this, mostly wooden Keanu Reeves, ensuring it's best watched through the lens of so bad it's good filmmaking. And that's because in any conventional sense it, wait, it stinks. Yeah, slap that on the back of the box, just wait. It stinks, I guess. Two out of five. <laughs> well, it stinks apart from the meme-worthy scene in which Reeves' titular protagonist launches off an unhinged rant about, of all things, room service. As Johnny rants to Jane about the sorry predicament that he's found himself in, he screams, I want room service. I want the club sandwich. I want the cold Mexican beer. I want a 10,000 a night hooker. Obviously, my rendition of this is like a two out of 10, but Keanu ramps it up to 11 it absolutely sells the scene. For as much as his performance is far too subdued to be interesting throughout the rest of the flick, in this single scene he absolutely knocks it out of the park and manages to be both genuinely captivating and totally hilarious. Number 5. The Final Battle The Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2 Beyond the craven greed of pointlessly splitting the final book into two movies, Breaking Dawn Part 2 is par for the course for the IP. Packed with shoddy melodrama that's impossible to take seriously, a problematic central romance to say the least, and I saw inducing visual effects, namely a CGI baby that is quite simply a crime against humanity. I mean, what the hell is this? Don't show me it! Gah! But director Bill Condon and writer Melissa Rosenberg pulled off one undeniably ingenious slight of hand for the film's finale. Basically, the climax to the Breaking Dawn novel is, well, a bit of an anti-climax, in that there isn't a final battle and everything just kind of ends on a whimper. So how do you end a movie adapted from a book that has a total non-event of an ending? Well, you make up a new one, but with a clever get-out-of-jail-free clause. So Breaking Dawn Part 2 ends with a totally insane and surprisingly brutal battle as the various heroic factions team up to battle the evil Volturi, with beloved characters being violently dismembered and beheaded left, right, and center. Fans, understandably, were utterly shocked and distressed at what they were seeing, given that this sequence and these deaths never occurred in the novel. Yet, as this glorious fight comes to an end, we pull back, and it's revealed that the battle was really just a vision being shown to the Volturi leader by Alice, which then convinces him to walk away. Now, this is honestly one of the few times in cinema history that the it was all a dream twist actually was worked in the movie's favor, because it gave us an extra action scene that was denied by the source material. Number 4. Michael Jordan's Cameo – Space Jam – A New Legacy you won't find many people sticking up for the daft legacy sequel Space Jam A New Legacy, which attempted to update the formula of the 1996 Michael Jordan starring sports comedy by doubling down on all things meta. Sadly, the end result wasn't all that great and cynicism dripped from every pore of its creation. Well, except for that glorious cameo from Michael Jordan. In the movie, at halftime during the climactic basketball match between the Toon Squad and the Goon Squad, Sylvester the Cat gleefully announces that he's found Michael Jordan to help them pull back a victory. But as the original film's star makes his apparent appearance, he's actually revealed instead to be Michael B. Jordan, the beloved Creed and Black Panther star. Given that a cameo from THE Michael Jordan seemed like a very real possibility, this was an absolutely hilarious subversion of expectations. A rug pull that overcame the disappointment of Jordan's absence by arguably giving us something greater. And to top it all off, the brief cameo ends with Daffy Duck asking Sylvester, we couldn't get Michael A. Jordan, so we got Michael B. Jordan? In a largely miserable, creatively devoid exercise, this was pretty good, I'll give it that. Number 3. He sh everywhere. Dumb and Dumberer when Harry met Lloyd. 
For most people, Dumb and Dumberer is an unpleasant half-remembered dream of a film. Released back in 2003, this prequel to the legendary 1994 Jim Carrey slash Jeff Daniels comedy succumbed to basically every imaginable prequel pitfall, desperately attempting to cash in on the original success and in turn feeling like a pale imitation of it. The filmmakers made one unequivocally smart call though, hiring the late great Bob Saget to play Mr. Matthews, the father of Harry and Lloyd's love interest Jessica. Saget plays a small but unforgettable role in the film, culminating in the immortal scene where he understandably freaks out after Harry smears a melted chocolate bar over his bathroom. Upon entering the bathroom, the actor's reaction is priceless, blurting out a hilariously expletive-filled rant as he believes that Harry has annihilated his bathroom in fecal matter. So yeah, thanks for giving us some temporary much needed relief, Bob. That was awesome. Number two, Grizabella sings a memory, Cats. From the moment the first trailer for Cats dropped, audiences were left unsettled by the dubious decision to have the film's all-star cast be digitally composited into CGI cat costumes. This resulted in a deeply queasy, uncanny valley look, with the characters appearing neither quite human nor feline, but rather an eerie hybrid of the two. There is a single scene that manages to mostly break through the nauseating visual effects and deliver something approximating the intended emotion of Andrew Lloyd Webber's source material though. When Grizabella belts out the haunting tune Memory, it's such a profound rendition of unarguably the musical's best song that you might, temporarily anyway, forget how bad the rest of the movie is and maybe even get a little teary-eyed in the process. In the film where so much effort is being made in the wrong direction, Jennifer Hudson at least brought her A-game and managed to turn in an affecting performance even while fighting against the distracting VFX. Number 1. Max's Drug Trip, Max Payne Max Payne should have been among the easier video game properties to adapt into movie form, because while it certainly owes a lot of its style to cinema itself, it also brings enough of its own noirish sensibility to the table to not feel like a pure ripoff. But 2008's Max Payne movie was a sure fire dud, hampered by workmanlike direction from John Moore, a script that listlessly cycled through the first game's narrative beats, and the dual miscasting of Mark Wahlberg as Max and Mila Kunis as femme fatale Mona Sachs. There's not even that much much action in it for a Max Payne game, which is like 99.9% .9 action, though Mua does strike fleeting gold near the end of the film, when Max is almost drowned and, in an attempt to prevent himself from dying from hypothermia, takes a dose of a hallucinogenic drug. As Max rejuvenates, he sees intense visions of Valkyries flying all around him, before he heads off and uses the drug's sense-enhancing properties to mow down fleets of bad guys before finally killing the villainous BB. It's the one sequence in the film that gets anywhere close to the mile a minute thrills and striking visuals of the video games, yet you have to sit through like 80 minutes of pure garbo to get to that point. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What did you think about these scenes in terrible movies? And are there any hidden gems I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.